No one can deny that the journey of the Starliner so far has been a disaster for the crew. But even if the spacecraft is nearing the end of its mission, it encounters a problem that could be said to impact the whole ISS. All will be revealed in today's episode of Alpha Tech. But before getting into the main content, I want to tell you, thank you all for supporting our channel throughout this time. We're now getting very close to the 100,000 subscriber mark. To hit that number, we do need your help. Please hit the subscribe button now so you won't miss out on any exciting content and also give us the motivation to continue creating every day. And now, let's continue. It feels like a scene from a sci-fi horror film. An unexplained sound emanates from a beleaguered spacecraft. It resembles a throaty sonar noise, and no one knows what's causing it. That's what happened over the weekend on the Boeing Starliner, a spacecraft currently docked to the International Space Station. After some sleuthing, NASA solved the mystery of the strange sound's origin. Of course, it wasn't aliens, but the cause wasn't as simple as the government agency initially stated. On Saturday, NASA astronaut Butch Wilmore noticed some strange noises coming from a speaker inside the Starliner spacecraft. Wilmore called down to Mission Control to ask about the unusual sounds coming from the Starliner speaker while the spacecraft was currently docked with the ISS. There's a strange noise coming through the speaker, Wilmore tells Mission Control. I don't know what's making it. He asked them to scratch your heads and see if you can figure out what's going on, asking them to call us if you figure it out. Mission Control noted that it sounded like a pulsing noise, almost like a sonar ping. Neither Mr. Wilmore nor the NASA staff in Mission Control appeared especially anxious about it. But Chris Hadfield, a Canadian astronaut who spent time on the space station, suggested that it would be worth worrying. There are several noises I prefer not to hear inside my spaceship, including this one that Boeing Starliner is now making, he wrote on X. This anomaly urged the government agency to quickly find an answer for this spacecraft, which has already encountered numerous issues. Fortunately, after investigating, NASA announced the noise seems to have just had a mundane explanation. The feedback from the speaker was the result of an audio configuration between the space station and Starliner, NASA said in a statement September 3rd. The space station audio system is complex, allowing multiple spacecraft and modules to be interconnected, and it's common to experience noise and feedback. The space agency emphasized that the feedback has no technical impact impact on the spacecraft crew, station operations, or plans to bring Starliner back home from orbit. In fact, astronauts occasionally notice such strange occurrences in space. For example, during China's first manned space flight in 2003, astronaut Yang Liwei reported hearing something that sounded like an iron bucket being hit with a wooden hammer while in orbit. Later, scientists realized that the noise was caused by small deformations in the spacecraft due to pressure differences between the inner and outer walls. Well, although this phenomenon may not pose a danger to a well-maintained spacecraft, for Starliner, the issue is much more complex. In reality, Starliner repeatedly has encountered technical malfunctions, making this project a very troubling story in the space industry. It's part of NASA's commercial crew program that involves the space agency pairing up with private companies to ferry astronauts to and from the ISS. SpaceX's Dragon capsule has been flying astronauts for years. Boeing's trying to catch up, but Starliner has encountered multiple technical glitches during its test flights. Starliner's first crewed test flight took Wilmore and Williams to the ISS in June, but leaks and thruster malfunctions mean the astronauts will be coming back on a SpaceX Dragon capsule and not a Starliner. Wilmore and Williams originally planned for an eight-day stay on the ISS, but now scheduled to come back early next year. If Starliner not only fails to safely return the crew, but also endangers the whole ISS, it would be another major blow to the reputations of both Boeing and NASA. Notably, NASA seems to have shown a particular favoritism towards Boeing's Starliner project. Even after making the final decision, NASA's administrator confidently declared that Starliner would be 100% ready to resume its mission soon. This raises questions about NASA's transparency and disclosing issues related to the unusual sounds on Starliner. Could this be an attempt to justify and avoid harsher criticism of the project? Earlier in June, when Starliner had just docked with the ISS for a few days, there were reports of an emergency sound on the space station. However, NASA later explained that it was simply a misunderstanding during the crew's drill and everything was safe. Regardless, these incidents and vague explanations have eroded the trust of space enthusiasts in NASA. It's inevitable that various theories about Starliner's situation will arise, as confidence in the collaboration between NASA and Starliner is being seriously shaken. However, it is important to emphasize that these doubts do not imply NASA's deliberately hiding info about Starliner's return schedule. Despite the numerous issues, the spacecraft still must complete its mission and return to Earth. In anticipation of the uncrewed return of Boeing Starliner spacecraft from 
from the ISS, NASA held a pre-departure briefing on Wednesday, September 4th, from its Johnson Space Center in Houston. NASA's Steve Stitch outlined the step-by-step -step process for Starliner's return to Earth. The sequence of events will approximately begin 45 minutes before the spacecraft undocks from ISS, when a go or no-go poll will be conducted, factoring in conditions at the designated landing site in White Sands, New Mexico. Once cleared, undocking is expected to happen at 6.04 p.m. Eastern Time, with springs instantly pushing the spacecraft away from the ISS. A short thruster burn will follow 30 seconds later, designed to further separate Starliner from the ISS. At approximately 11.17 p.m. Eastern Time, the spacecraft will execute a deorbit burn lasting around a minute, setting it on a course for reentry. The spacecraft's expected to touch down at White Sands Landing Site at 12.04 a.m. Eastern Time, Saturday, September 7th, roughly six hours after undocking. While this return mission will be uncrewed, NASA says it will still gather critical data simulating a crewed flight. The spacecraft is outfitted with accelerometers and sensors in the seats that will measure forces akin to those experienced by astronauts during re-entry and landing. Additionally, the interior of Starliner will record environmental data such as pressure and temperature fluctuations, which will be vital for evaluating the vehicle's performance and safety. NASA has scheduled a post-landing press conference to take place at approximately 1.30 Eastern Time, offering a chance to assess the spacecraft's return and discuss any pertinent findings for the mission. Due to the unpredictable New Mexican weather, NASA's prepared backup delays in case of bad weather, such as strong winds or rain, affects the landing plan. These backup opportunities are spaced four days apart, providing flexibility to ensure safe landing conditions. It's impossible not to mention the challenges faced by the Starliner crew. The Starliner story reveals different spacesuits designed for astronauts on various spacecraft. The Boeing suits that NASA astronauts Butch Wilmore and Suni Williams wore on their journey to the ISS will return to Earth with the uncrewed Starliner. However, Boeing spacesuits are not compatible with SpaceX's spacecraft. To address this, NASA provided Wilmore and Williams with SpaceX suits for their planned return to Earth on Crew-9, scheduled for late February or early March next year. Williams has tested one of the SpaceX suits currently on the ISS and confirmed it fits well. Meanwhile, a second suit will be sent to the ISS on the future Crew-9 resupply mission for Wilmore. NASA has confirmed that in an emergency, Wilmore and Williams could be evacuated on Crew-8 in the cargo pallet area. However, they would not have access to spacesuits in this situation, raising further safety concerns. Another potential concern relates to the Starliner's thrusters, which NASA suspects may not be fully operational. Fortunately, the spacecraft's equipped with 21 other functioning thrusters, providing redundancy and ensuring Starliner can complete its mission safely. NASA also discussed future certification plans for Starliner. Boeing had initially planned another Starliner mission for February 2025. However, due to technical issues and delays, that mission's now been postponed to August next year. This additional time will allow NASA and Boeing to address any remaining concerns, ensuring Starliner meets all necessary safety requirements and improves its performance for future crewed missions. So, what does the future hold for NASA and Boeing? As Boeing and NASA continue to collaborate to improve Starliner's program, the upcoming uncrewed return will serve as a critical milestone. Although the spacecraft will return to Earth without astronauts on board, this is an important test of Starliner systems, readiness, and overall capability. The data collected from this mission will inform future crewed flights, solidifying Starliner's role as a key player in NASA's commercial spaceflight program. Looking ahead to 2025 and beyond, Boeing and NASA are working hard to ensure that Starliner can ultimately function as a reliable transportation system for astronauts. Despite delays and challenges, the program remains an integral part of NASA's broader vision for commercial partnerships and the future of human space exploration. Since their arrival aboard the ISS, astronauts Wilmore and Williams have conducted at least 42 experiments, dedicating over 100 hours to research. Their work spans a wide range of disciplines, helping to advance knowledge in areas like biology, physics, and space technologies. Additionally, they've maintained a rigorous schedule of physical fitness, incorporating resistance training and cardio exercises to counteract the physical toll of extended periods in microgravity. Both astronauts are reported to be in excellent health and spirits, frequently staying in touch with their families through NASA's communication network. Their stay aboard the ISS will continue until their return with Crew-9 next year. That's all for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time.